come in for a scary story, if you dare. <laughs> The Missing Things, a horror story from Reddit. It started with the small stuff, my keys, my phone charger, even the remote for the TV, all seemed to vanish when I needed them most, only to turn up in strange places later. At first, I brushed it off. I live alone, so there's no one else to misplace things. I was just getting careless, overworked maybe, but the more it happened, the more I started to wonder if something was off. It began innocently enough. I'd come home from work, toss my keys on the kitchen counter like I always did, and go about my evening. But then, when I went to grab them the next morning, they wouldn't be there. I'd scour the house, searching through drawers behind cushions, even checking the car. Nothing. Hours later, I'd find them in places I never would have put them. On the bathroom sink, under my bed, inside the refrigerator once. I laughed it off the first few times. <laughs> I'm getting old, I joked to myself, losing my mind. But then, it wasn't so funny anymore. The remote was the next to go. I'm not much of a TV person, but I'll watch the occasional late night movie. I distinctly remember setting the remote down on the coffee table after watching something, something forgettable. The next evening, the remote was gone. I tore the room apart. Cushions overturned, drawers open, shelves emptied. Still, nothing. Two days passed, and I found it under the bed. Not beside the bed. Under it, deep in the corner, where I'd never have placed it. I tried to ignore it, but the feeling crept up on me. A strange unease. Like someone had been in my house. Like I wasn't alone. But the doors were always locked, the windows shut, no signs of forced entry, no one else had a key, it was just me, wasn't it? Then, my shoes went missing, the pair I wear every day. I came home from work, slipped them off at the front door like always, and went to bed. The next morning, gone. I found them two days later, perfectly placed in my closet. The thing is... I never keep them in the closet. I've always left them by the door. That's when the paranoia started. I began wondering if maybe someone was coming into my house when I wasn't there, some weirdo slipping in, moving things around just to mess with me. I even considered setting up a camera, but something about that idea made me feel stupid. Who would break in just to hide my stuff? It had to be me, right? Maybe stress was getting to me. Maybe I was losing control. But it got worse. My wallet was the first major item to disappear. I remember leaving it on the kitchen counter before bed. When I woke up, it was gone. I tore the house apart, again. I checked the car, my jacket pockets, even the trash. Days passed and I was ready to cancel my cards when it finally showed up, tucked under a pile of books on my nightstand. I didn't put it there. I know I didn't. And then, my phone went missing. I always kept it on the nightstand when I slept. Always. But one morning, it was gone. Just gone. I didn't sleep that night. I couldn't. I kept picturing someone creeping into my room while I slept, reaching for my phone, maybe standing there, watching me. I stayed awake, pacing the house, listening for the faintest creak of the floorboards watching the shadows move across the walls, but no one came. It took a week to find my phone. I finally found it under the couch, wedged deep between the cushions, as if someone had deliberately pushed it there. My heart raced as I held it in my hand. This was no mistake. Someone was toying with me. But how? Why? I finally gave in and set up cameras. Just two. One in a living room, one in the hallway facing the bedroom door. If someone was coming into my house, I would catch them. But that night, something even worse happened. I woke up in the middle of the night to a sound, a soft, distant thud. I froze in bed, my heart pounding in my chest, straining to hear it again. And then it came, another quiet thud. 
like something being moved. I got up, grabbed the nearest object for protection, a broom of all things, and crept through the house. Nothing. No one. But when I went to check the camera footage the next morning, the files were gone, completely erased. My blood ran cold. I didn't sleep the next night, or the night after that. I stopped eating properly. I didn't trust myself anymore. Could it have been me all along? Moving things, hiding things, losing things? Was I erasing the footage without realizing it? I stopped going to work. I stopped leaving the house entirely. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was inside, waiting for me to leave, waiting to rearrange my life, to push me further toward the edge. Then, one morning, I woke up to find something on the kitchen counter. Something I hadn't seen in days. My phone. But it wasn't the phone that terrified me. No, what chilled me to my core was the text message open on the screen. Found it yet? It wasn't my text. It wasn't my message. And I realized then, with a sickening dread, that I was never alone in the first place. And maybe, I never would be. Friendly Cryptid Hello. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you. I'll give you a moment to stop screaming. Are you done? Okay, a little more. <laughs> I'll wait. All better? Good. I'm Glenn. I live in these woods. I've been here for a very long time. No, I'm not here to eat you. Quite the opposite. I'm here to warn you. You've stepped into a bad part of these woods, and I hate to tell you this, but you're never making it back. Oh no, you're crying. P please don't cry. If you start crying, I'll start crying. Oh no, here come the tears. I'm crying now too. It's okay, little buddy. Just let it out. Good, we've had our cry. Now, let's get to the rules. Rule one, stay on the path. I can't stress this enough. You leave the path and I can't protect you. The path equals safety. Safety means survival. You want me to explain? <laughs> There's nothing to explain. I'm the only friendly face you'll meet out here. Yes, I know, the flesh is rotting off my exposed skull, but the things out there are much worse. Other lost souls who didn't listen to my rules. Look, do you want my help or not? The sun is about to set and it only gets worse. Rule two, never look back. No matter what you hear. If you hear something behind you, do not look back, even if you feel its breath on you. Do not look. Rule three, you're going to see your worst fears out there. Snakes, spiders, <laughs> you wish. I'm talking about the deepest, darkest fears, traumatizing phantoms of your past type self. But you look like a well-rounded person. You'll do fine. Your grandpa is still dead, so use that information at your leisure. I'm winking right now, but the no eyelids thing? Sorry. Rule four. The sunrise resets everything. Don't worry about starving. Everything you have on your person, you still have it again. So any food and water you have, you'll have it again the next day. See, it's not all that bad, but it's a double-edged sword. Anything you gain, it'll be gone. So, if you find anything useful, use it that day. It'll disappear when you wake. You will sleep, when the moon is highest in the sky. You'll drift off to sleep, and the new day starts. Or, the same day. I've never really thought about it till now. <laughs> Rule 5 your grandpa is still dead. He can't hurt you. Do not listen to the voices. They will deceive. It's not your partner or your kids. All tricks to take you off the path. Trust me, you do not want anything of what those guys are preparing for you. There was this one gal, I was hoping she'd make it. Hurt her daughter in a cave. Let's just say, she can fit in a small box when they finish whatever they did. What did they do? <laughs> no idea. But if I'm disturbed by it, 
I can only imagine what your mortal mind would think of it. Did I mention your grandpa is still dead? Rule 6. Grab only what you need. Do you think this is vague? You'll understand after a bit. I don't want to give away too much. My eyes are bleeding? Oh, look at that. Huh, that's a new one. At least my fur isn't falling out yet. Yeah, I'm getting old. How old are you? Never ask a monster their age. I'll let that slide since you are new here. Now, the last rule for survival. Rule 7. Never change direction. You'll reach forks in the trail. Pick a path. Don't think too hard about it. There are no wrong choices with it. It's there to confuse you, trick you to go back. Don't obsess about it. Just keep walking forward. All right, I've given you all I can. Now run. I at least gotta make it look like I'm doing my job. Run, little lamb. Run. Someone was in my room. A true ghost story from Reddit. This all happened a long time ago, when I was living with my dad, around the age of 17, but I still remember it like it was yesterday. Dad had recently bought a townhouse in the city and I had gotten my own room on the second floor. It was a rectangular room with a single window opposite the door. Once you walked in, there was a tall bookcase straight ahead, protruding from the left-hand wall, with my bed right behind it. To your right, there was a corner desk with my computer and along the right-hand wall, there was a keyboard standing next to an old swivel chair that I inherited from my grandparents. I had never felt anything off about my room prior to the events I'm about to tell you, and all of this occurred over the span of about a week or two. Everything started with the feeling of being watched. You know that creepy sensation crawling up your skin, hair standing on end, making your muscles tense and your heartbeat speed up? It happened late at night, when I had crawled into bed after turning off the lights, and the room somehow felt a bit colder than usual. So, I pulled up my duvet to cover the tip of my nose, while willing whatever was in my room to go away. After some time had passed, the feeling of being watched completely vanished, and I could finally fall asleep. But the sensation returned that following night. In fact, it started happening every night, relentlessly, building in intensity, until I could distinctly feel the presence of someone sitting in the chair opposite my bed, watching me. It was without a doubt the presence of a man, but I still tried to deny it, to will his presence away. But it was as if the more I resisted, the more he wanted to make himself known. Then, the chair started moving on its own, spinning gently from side to side, and there was no way for me to deny it any longer. Something, or rather someone, was in my room, and he wasn't alive. The exact moment I admitted it to myself, the moment I asked who he was, what he wanted, the chair stopped moving. He had gotten up, and I could feel him walking toward me, the air growing ever so slightly colder with each step. Once he was standing right beside my bed, I had already pulled the duvet all the way up to my head. What happened next, though, was really weird. I stopped feeling afraid. Stunned by the realization, I slowly pulled the duvet back down, only to be surprised by the sight of a young and very handsome man standing next to me. He reached out to touch my cheek. It was a really odd thing, because I could actually feel his soft fingers on my skin, yet at the same time, it did not feel entirely real. I remember asking again who he was, why he was there, but he only smiled and told me that he simply wanted to see me again before he left. Although I knew for a fact that I hadn't met him before, yet at the same time, he did somehow feel familiar, as if we had known each other before, when I wasn't who I am now. It was the strangest feeling. When I studied his face, the look in his eyes filled with something I could only describe as love, but it was the kind of love you harbor for your significant other. He also looked young, in his 20s, which made me a bit concerned, so I asked if he had been around that age when he died. 
He smiled again and told me no. He had lived a long, happy life and died an old man. He simply appeared as his younger version of his former self because he thought I would feel more comfortable with that. It was such an odd conversation looking back. But then, something even more strange happened. Once we had finished our conversation, he told me it was his time to go. I was still laying in my bed, the bookcase right behind my head in a completely dark room, when suddenly, a warm bright light lit up the darkness from behind me. It was as if someone had captured the sun and put it in my bookcase. Then, he was simply gone. I never felt his presence again after that night, and I have never experienced anything like that since.